Hello YouTube, this is a very short video and I'm going to work through an example using the hypergeometric distribution that we use in probability and statistics as opposed to the binomial distribution. So let's go ahead and take a look at the example, example number four here. It says a recent study found that four out of nine houses were underinsured. If five houses are selected from the nine houses, find the probability that exactly two are underinsured. So just like my last video, if you watched the last one, the very first thing we want to do is read the last sentence and write down what it is that we're trying to find. And in this instance, we're saying, okay, find the probability that exactly two houses are underinsured, okay, if we select five houses from the deal. So we say two underinsured. One thing I do want to point out is this. In most instances, we would say this is a binomial experiment because when you grab a house from these nine houses, either it's going to be underinsured or it's going to be not underinsured. But we could classify this as an either or instance or binomial because the outcomes are either one or the other. Uh, the reason why we're using hypergeometric though is because we have such a small sample size. So for example, if you were to remove a house from the sample of nine houses and say, look, was it underinsured or not? By answering that question and now going back and trying to get another house, now you're getting a house out of eight houses as opposed to nine houses. And the fact that you removed the one house from the sample size affected the probability of you grabbing an under or not underinsured house on the next house. When you're dealing with large sample sizes like a thousand, the removal of one house is so significantly small that we could get away with using binomial. We are using hypergeometric here because, because it is such a small sample size. The other thing I want to mention is this. If it is not underinsured, uh, then it's something else. But in this instance, we're saying if five houses are selected from the nine houses, find the probability that exactly two are underinsured. So we want two under, and since we're grabbing five total, that really means we also have three not underinsured. But this is what we want to find the likelihood of. So in order to do this, we'll just go ahead and draw our sample space. We know it's binomial-ish, so we could say one category is like under, we care about this, and we said not underinsured. Uh, from the information given above, we know that uh, the underinsured houses, we said in our study four of them were underinsured, and it was four out of nine total, so which means the other five must have been not underinsured. So we've written our probability. We've drawn out our sample space. Let's go ahead and find two things, our sample space size and our event space size. When we find the sample space size, okay, I could be honest with you here, you know, most of these binomial experiments look like this. And we'll fill in these blanks. But we're saying on the bottom we're going to put in totals numbers. And what do you mean by totals numbers? Well, first things first, if I'm going to find the probability that two are underinsured and three are not, first of all, I need to find out you know, how many total ways are there for us to select just five houses from these nine houses? So using totals numbers here, by totals numbers I mean this five houses here and the nine total, nine total, nine total here. We're going to say of these nine houses, I want to choose five. This represents the number of ways we could get five houses from nine houses. Now to do these things for the top, we'll just crawl through one category at a time starting with this. We had four underinsured houses, four of them, and we wanted to choose two. And we had five that were not underinsured, and we wanted to choose three of those. One thing I do want to point out, though, and so perhaps I'll change the colors over to like a green here. We're almost done with this problem anyways. But, you know, this four here and this five here, they should sum up to the nine that we had total down here. And also, you know, if we, I don't know, let's switch it out again. Let's go like a, that'll work. You'll notice that this two here and this three here, if we selected two underinsured and three not underinsured, those are the five total we grabbed here. So now we just need to like work these out and evaluate these things. So I do believe four choose two. Four choose two. Let's see here. Four choose two. I'm using a calculator by hand. Sorry to be lazy about it, but we get six. Okay, and then five choose three. So we have five choose three. It's ten. So we say ten on top and on the bottom we have nine choose five so nine choosing five at a time we get 126 so we got about a 60 126 chance or a 30 uh, 60 thirds and then 30 divided by 63 I can tell you is uh, 0 0.4762 ish so about 0 0.4762 ish is the probability that we were after so cheers